Danielle Cook is a professional nutritionist and cooking instructor, and her sister, Adrienne Cook, is a gardening and cooking writer. We're excited to have them with us today to do Spring Fling live online cooking demonstration. So with that, take it away, Danielle and Adrienne. Thank you, Libby. Thank you. Good morning, everybody, or good afternoon. So we're here to do a spring fling, which means that's why we're dressed in, in, in yellow, bright yellow for spring, and we're bringing lots of greens. Do you want to introduce yourself? Oh, I'm Adrian. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You got to remind me of these things. <laughs> I'm Adrian. This is my little sister, Danielle. <laughs> Younger sister. Younger. Right. Um, so here we are. We've got, our, our, got some of our greens and we've got some beautiful strawberries. Danielle's going to be handling the dessert. And I'm going to start with the salad. So it's exciting to get into markets now. There's been a definite transition into, you can just see it, you can feel it, you can smell it. The colors say it all. So we're excited to bring lots of fresh herbs. And um, of course, as she said, asparagus, asparagus and um, strawberries, strawberries, but yeah. not in the same recipe. <laughs> we are not going to start with dessert today. Sometimes we do do that. But I'm gonna. We're gonna go ahead and let Adrian get launched with um, a little bit of uh, a little bit of a lot of things for this wonderful smoked salad with smoked fish. Yes. Well, thank you. Uh, okay. So without further ado, uh, we are going to. I want to talk a little bit about what we're going to be doing today. So we're going to start with the asparagus, and I've got them a little so partially done. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and switch over to the burner because we wanna get that started right away because they're gonna cook for just a little bit. Well, you wanna show them how did you prep them up and what did you, okay. what what size did you pick and why did you pick that size? Oh, these are these are beautiful little skinny ones. They'll, they'll cook very quickly. And this is a salad where you wanna keep everything fresh and crisp. And so we're just gonna essentially give them just a kiss of heat and just enough to sizzle them up and and then and then we'll we'll let them steam in their own heat basically um so you know how to i'm sure most of you know how to how to prep asparagus you just break them where they where they want to break normally like this so you've got a long stem you hold the two sides and boom and that's where you want to break it now you can use the the, the longer part of the stems for an asparagus soup so don't necessarily throw those out because they're very That's useful. also you can also put that into a vegetable broth. You can you? put it into a vegetable broth. Absolutely, yes. I love to do that. So these are these are about um, th these are actually kind of a nice size. They're a perfect size to serve whole. I'm going to go ahead and cut them in half because we are putting together a whole salad, um, and we want to have the mixed in. You want more of a size that you can manage. Right. I mean, once these are um once they're cooked, they're gonna relax too. Exactly. Exactly. That's true. They will. They'll they'll reduce a little bit. So we're gonna go over to this to the uh, stove and um get started. We got we got the fire, the stove going. Yeah. Let me just uh, give you a, a another angle so you can actually see what Adrian's gonna be doing from um from this side. Um you wanna get your pan hot, right? Yes. Get your pan hot and then pour in the, the pan's actually warming up a little bit. So I'm just going to go ahead and pour in the, uh, there we go. We're going to pour in the, the oil. And in this particular case, we are using this oil, this oil that the asparagus are going to cook in is going to be the oil for the salad dressing. You got to go to the camera, right? Okay. We're just trying to adjust the camera here and make sure that everybody sees there everything else. Okay, there we go. So we're going to do about maybe a little over a quarter of a cup. And I'm cutting this uh, whole recipe a little bit, uh, back a little bit, because it makes a lot. And so we're just going to go ahead and cut. So I'm doing a quarter of a cup for right now. I may add some more oil as we go along. But going to get these in and let them sizzle. We're starting, we're starting with the larger pieces at the bottom. We're going to get those going first because the tops will cook a lot faster. So I'm just going to leave those out for another minute or so. 
and let's get this. Started. That's an important step, I think. You you want to start with the with the thicker part because those pretty little tops of the asparagus really don't need the, the same no, amount of time. That's right. But you know, these are small and thin, so don't go very quickly and you do want them to make sure that they stay crisp, so do not overcook them. That's a really key thing. It's better to have them slightly other, undercooked than even slightly overcooked. Now, would you add any salt to this? Uh, we could. We could put a little salt in here. I, I usually like to put a little pinch when I'm doing this. It just helps the moisture. It helps kind of speed up the process. Yes, it does. It does. And it's nice to have it cook, the salt cooked in a little bit. Yeah. Started. Yeah. But you don't have to use any salt at all in this recipe. If you don't, if you're trying to cut back on salt, there's plenty of flavor going on between the olives and the smoked fish and everything else that's going to be in this that you almost can leave the salt out completely. But we are going to put a little bit in. Now we're going to go ahead and add our tops. Let's go. And they're they're quite a bit thinner than the others, and they've got that sort of leafy thing going on at the top. Keeping asparagus from the garden when they're just like this is really what you want because other, eventually what they'll do is they'll they'll leaf out, and you don't want that to uh, start happening and the buds really kind of falling apart. Uh, it's the sweetness of the asparagus that comes out in those lovely tight buds at the top. Okay. We're going to grab a little bit of here. I'm going to put some more olive oil in here. The asparagus are absorbing it. So you want almost just about a half a cup by the time all is said and done. This is all going to go right into the salad. And we're going to grab a little bit of All you need is about a teaspoon, a tablespoon. You can hear that sizzling. And where's my cup? this on. I'm going to shut this off. That's what I'll do is I'll shut this off. Woo, that's gone. Yep. Goodness gracious, it's sitting all over the place. This is what we call uh, cooking them to crisp tender. Yes. So it's really literally like a tablespoon of water she put in there. Just with the, the combination, the interaction with the olive oil will get them just to where you need them. And we're going to leave that the lid partially on because We'll leave it just a little opening over there so that the uh, water will continue to evaporate. All right, now we're going to switch back over. We can do that to the. So there we go. <laughs> we're back. So, and Any questions so, with that step? Any questions? Or about asparagus? Yeah, about growing, growing them, or growing them, or buying them. Um, not so far. So please keep going, and we'll we'll we'll. Uh, take a little set, we will second for some questions later. All right. So now we're going to go to the to our herbs. So we're going to ch chop up some herbs. There we go. So I've got I've got some parsley, which actually what I'm going to do with the parsley is not even chop it. I'm just going to take the break off the uh, leaves like this. So they'll be like whole leaves. I just think they're very attractive, very pretty, whether you're using the Italian parsley like this or whether you're using curly parsley. It's just nice to have them whole and it gives a kind of a nice uh, little effect in the salad as you're eating it. And, you know, it's part of the uh, part of the uh, greens because we're also going to have some greens sort of as a decorative element in this. But obviously you want to eat all the good stuff. And then what we'll do is we'll have, I've, so I've got dill, I've got the, the parsley, I've got the dill right here, this beautiful dill. And it's, this is something that you'll definitely, uh, you should definitely be seeing in the farmer's markets right now because it's, uh, it's a cool loving plant and it does really well in the spring and the fall. In the summertime, it tends to go to seed but right now it's really at its best. Now in May uh, and June, by uh, July, it's kind of lost its, its uh, uh, most, a lot of its uh, tight little leaves like this. They, they, it'll, it'll bloom, it has a beautiful bloom and the dill seeds are wonderful to eat. So that's something that you can, we can talk about maybe later in the summer when we'll be back again. Um, but um, it's also a a wonderfully complimentary herb 
to the smoked fish that we're using it today. Is. We yeah. have a few chives again. Another another herb that does really well in the in the in the cool weather. This is the season for chives. Uh, we're going to be seeing the chive bloom very soon, and those are great to add to a salad. They're edible, so that's something to think about if you get those lovely purple blooms. They um they make if you pop them into uh, white vinegar, they may turn the vinegar a gorgeous pink color, and they flavor it with the taste of asparagus of uh, chives. Which is a, a, almost an oniony onion kind of. Thing. Yeah, you have sort of a an onion flavored vinegar and uh, yeah those uh, those beautiful phytonutrients that yeah. that's what gives it the purple color exactly. are uh, working for your health. So okay. and now we're going to take just a handful of basil leaves. We're, we've got a mixture of different uh, herbs that we're that's going into this. Uh, you can do one or one, or you can do a mixture as I've done, and you don't have to stick with what I've got here today. You could add, uh, I'd love to use oregano or margarine. Uh, I'd stay away from sage, but I'd love to put a little bit of rosemary, uh, some, um, uh, what else do we have? Oh, mint. Mint is terrific in this. So you're talking about only fresh herbs when you say marjoram, oregano, yes, the fresh, and rosemary. Exactly. The fresh, the fresh herbs. This is really a summer, set, spring, summer, fall, uh, early fall salad, and you want to use the freshest ingredients uh, for all of it. I don't. I've never tried using dried uh, the herbs with it this. It just doesn't it's seem just, like it would work. I mean, it's a, you get a different end result. Yeah, it's not really. It's it doesn't lend itself to that. Um, so if you're, you know, if you don't have fresh, I mean, it's easy enough to find different fresh herbs because you don't have to pick specific ones you can just play with it all right so now we're going to bring over our, our bowl we're going to assemble the salad move this over a little bit and we've got our asparagus all cool down here cool down a little bit anyway we're just going to pour everything right into that there we are doesn't that look beautiful already? <laughs> we don't have to do anything else, didn't you? <laughs> this is it. Um, no, well, oh, you've got a laundry it. list of ingredients we do, here. We do. So, so do I, I, I made these um, these white beans. Now I like the white beans in this, but the uh, the um, cranberry beans are a beautiful addition because they've got a little bit of color, so that works out. Um, but the my favorites are the cannellini. So I tend to use the cannellini more than anything else. For this, so we're going to put some of those in there. Maybe just a little bit more. And you cooked those from uh, dried. Yes, I did. Can I have the bowl? Oh yes, you can have the bowl. Thank you. There you go. Okay, and then we're going to add our cucumbers. So we're just layering this basically for right now. We're going to toss it all in a minute, and then we're going to add some beautiful onions. Look at these colors. Just a little bit more here. About a half a cup or so, and some olives. It's already starting to look pretty luscious, and it's about a cup of olives. And I'm using Kalamata olives today, but uh, I really love it with the. Um, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and use all of these. I love it with the um, the oil oil based olives. They're, they're really my favorites because they have a very mellow, a um, very mellow uh, flavor, and they've got a really nice it's kind of an oily component to it that's that's quite delicious um are you talking about the moroccan oil based oil cured yeah or any of the, the french ones you know oh yeah yeah okay now we're going to put all of our herbs in we're going to toss all this so we can just go ahead and i'm going to lift this right up and just dump all the herbs in so all these fresh herbs look at that Okay, now we've got some lemon juice here. I'm gonna put this right here. And we have some just make this a little bit of garlic, which is still wrapped. Sorry, hang on for a second. Let me unwrap it. So we've got about a tablespoon of garlic, almost two, maybe two tape, maybe two teaspoons, and then some lemon zest so we're just going to go ahead and put i'm going to go ahead and put most of this in here like so sprinkle it on top 
it's going to be quite a garlicky rest of dressing because I like it that way. You don't have to put the full amount in if you are uh, a little shy on the garlic or you don't want to have quite as much of a flavor. That's not a problem. And then we're going to add our lemon juice. This is about four tablespoons. And this is really, this, this is, this is going to give it that bright, summery, springy, summery kind of flavor to it, you know, with the, I should have opened this before I, ah. Uh. So you are essentially just making this salad dressing like straight into the bowl. I am, because what's going to happen here is we turn it, we're going to bring the, here we go. Here's the vinegar, red wine vinegar. Woo! Easy, girlfriend. There we go. <laughs> so, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn it under and we're gonna mix it up so that that olive oil comes up from the bottom. And we should probably go ahead and put some more salt and pepper on it right now while yeah. we're mixing it. You gonna add some, some more oil? Nope. Okay. That's it on the oil. That's it on the oil. Just the oil from sauteing the, the Yeah, it's about a half a cup of oil that we've got in yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, that's I saw so, that. But sometimes I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. Here we go. And that's about as much just a little bit. I would say maybe a teaspoon of, of salt is as much as you're gonna need for this whole salad. So all these flavors are mixed together and at this point you can let it sit for a little while. Um, it, you don't want to sit, let it sit over long, but the, the herbs are sufficiently, uh, especially the parsley with the whole leaves, they're not going to fade away. They're just going to sort of absorb that over time. So you could put it in the refrigerator for about an hour if you want it. You can make it ahead. It's a great buffet uh, item because it doesn't fit, it doesn't droop. It doesn't, you know, it just kind of stays like this. But you see all the different textures and colors. And you can make it with string beans instead of instead of uh, asparagus in the summertime. That's what I do in the summertime. I switch over to beans <clears throat> for this. Okay, last but not least, the most important part is the um, smoked fish. Now, I, I, lo I love trout. I think it's great in it. And it's certainly something that we could, you could use for this. Um, in fact, that's what the recipe calls for right now. But I also have available, I've got up in... Rhode Island, where I, where we have, uh, I sometimes go on vacation. Um, there's a place that sells. Look at this. Looks like it just came from the butcher. It sells beautiful smoked blue. So this is smoked, smoked blue, blue fish. fish. Smoked blue fish. If you're not familiar with blue fish, it's a, it's a, it's a fish that you can get. I mean, it's fished up in the north, North Atlantic. I don't know if we can get it down here in. In the mid-atlantic but anyway it's a very meaty fish and they sm and it smokes up beautifully and it's, it's it's sold up there and that's what i'm going to use today but of course trout works smoked salmon will work how about the dry smoked salmon the dry smoked it? salmon is brilliant it's just terrific in this in fact i like it better than the scottish smoked salmon um it has more um more uh more texture to it i think it has more more it, it's like more like the blue fish where it's got kind of like a lot of body to it and the, and the trout same thing with the trout you get you get that same same thing going okay now let's do our little decor we're going to tuck some beautiful market greens yes some greens from the farmer's market around the edges there we go And as people serve themselves, they can dip down with their spoon, with a, with a serving spoon or the tongs, whatever it is you're serving with. And get some of that salad dressing up on there. I'm just going to put a couple more of these little parsley leaves on here. And our nuts. This is, uh, these are our uh, pumpkin seeds. You can use sunflower seeds. You can use um, pinellas, you know, the pine nuts. So I will say from a nutrition standpoint, you're packing in these omega-3s between the pumpkin seeds and this bluefish. 
uh, this is a cold water, very, very helpful cold water fish. Uh, one that we don't tend to eat enough of. But um, this is just like a powerhouse salad. Well, and it has that dark flesh, which is, I think, yeah. one of the things that That's... we look for when it comes to nutri nutrient high, nutrition high, omega high, right? Yes, omega three. Omega high. And then dollop some, excuse me just a second, I need a little touch of water. Look at all the happy emojis we're getting. Lovely. This is just yogurt. Greek that, yogurt. Greek yogurt. That's going to go with that, all that lemon juice and the garlic. I'm just going to do a couple more of these dollops. If you don't want dairy in this, don't use the Greek yogurt. Just leave it out. And that's about it, I think. We pretty much used up all this. This is your lunch and your dinner, Danielle. So this makes a great luncheon. I mean, think of Mother's Day lunch, really. I mean, it, just, it would be a really fantastic. It's got a beautiful day and you want to serve it outside. And there we are. Woo, gorgeous. Oh my, look? that looks beautiful. Mm. There we go. And so here we are, and you're just gonna, we're just gonna put the spoon in so it's ready to go. We'll grab some a little bit later on after Danielle's got done her, her dessert. Definitely. Um, I do have a couple questions for you if you sure. have a few right. seconds. Yeah. So someone was asking if the flavor profile would change if you were using white asparagus. If we're using white asparagus? Yes. Uh, no, it would not change at all. I think it would be lovely with white asparagus. I would suggest that you might want to go with the cranberry beans if you're going to use white asparagus so that you have the, con the color contrast, but the flavor, the flavor profile would stay exactly the same, and and I think you 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 enjoy that a lot. I mean, the the white asparagus have a, a butteriness to it. Um, you'd have to be, I would say, you'd have to be very careful on the sautéing because those cook up faster than, in my experience, they cook up faster. They're 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 much more fibrous than the. Um, than the green ones. I don't know if you would agree Yeah, they, they tend to be a little a little fatter too. Yeah. You don't get yeah. the skinny, but I think you just do it and, and use it. You, you could slice them in half lengthwise and, and, and saute them that way. That might that might be a, a help in terms of getting them to the right consistency before you put them in the salad. But the flavor profile stays the same. Any other questions? Fantastic, yes. Um, could you serve this without the fish? For people who might be uh, yes, yeah. you absolutely could and i've had it without the fish and it's really a nice a great white bean asparagus combination that works really well and if you wanted to you could go on the meat end of things and put in some smoked sausage like a, a thinly sliced kielbasa that you've sauteed do something like that or just leave the meat out completely and just serve it vegetarian yeah we we were having a big discussion about this the other day on what else uh you know if if a fish, if you didn't have access to, or didn't care for smoked fish. So one of the things that, um, that we would suggest is for the vegetarians and even the non-vegetarians, you can do a nice uh, crispy tofu to put on top. Yeah. Um, chunks of that. Baked or, or sauteed, yeah, absolutely. Um, and you can, in order to get that smoky flavor that we really like with this salad, if you go the tofu route, you can um, you can actually uh, sear the tofu, sprinkle it with some Cajun um, a Cajun rub, you know, a nice Cajun uh, dry spice combination, and then pan sear them, um, and that'll bake in that that smoky. Uh, Add a little smoked paprika too. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, but you can make your own. You can also make your own Cajun yes, spice blend with right. some smoked paprika. Um, so you, you had talked about the yogurt. Um, if you do, is the yogurt necessary? Could you do like, um, a goat cheese or something with this or are there non-dairy options that you could do? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think I would stay away from goat cheese because there's already so many flavors going right uh, with this that you don't really want to add another flavor as strong as a goat cheese. So we would, we could do, you could do a non-dairy yogurt. There's, there's coconut yogurt. There's uh, other... I don't, I don't know about the coconut yogurt. I think that's, that's kind of a strong flavor. I mean, you could do goat cheese if you didn't do the, the, the fish. Yes. 
That's a good point. Yes, you could do the goat cheese with that. But there are, um, there's, there's some oat milk. Uh, there's an oat milk yogurt brand out there that's very, very good. But leaving so, it out is completely permissible. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It works fine without it. I like it with it because it just adds another element to it that kind of ties everything together. But you don't have to use it. So you can just... Wait. Yeah, one more question for you, and that's, could you pre-mix the dressing separately if you wanted to make it ahead? Um, you'd have to figure out a way of getting all that, that that liquid out of the asparagus, but that's not too hard. You could drain the asparagus and make the uh, make the, uh, the the vinaigrette separately, and then you have all your ingredients separate, everything ready to go, and you can mix it all together at that point. It's not necessary. It will add a little another step for you and maybe some more dishes, but if, that's, if you want to do it that way, you will certainly certainly is totally fine and that that would give you something that's ready to go so mm -hmm. yeah all right that's wonderful well, i think we're good on our questions for right now so danielle if you want to jump in and start with your recipe okay yep so we're going to scoot that out of the way and i'm going to bring in the next round which everybody is waiting i know you're all waiting with abated breath on this incredible dessert that we're going to be making today so I've got a number of ingredients to get in front of me here. Flip this over. We've got strawberries and strawberries and more strawberries. Um, and uh, meringues. So this is a really fun dessert that, that uh, so a couple of things with this. It comes to together quickly. It needs to be served relatively immediately. Um, and um, it's a fabulous way of using up lots of berries. So we like it for all of those reasons. And I'm going to actually <clears throat> flip things over so you can see what I'm doing from the overhead so that it's going to be an easier vantage point. And we're going to also spend a minute doing some whipped cream, but not till towards the end of the, uh, the uh, recipe. And um, You'll have to bear with me while that machine is going. So let's just go over a few things. I've got uh, a pound, about a pound, pound and a half of strawberries. I'm actually gonna make a slightly lesser amount. So the, the, this strawberry eaten mess is essentially whipped cream with meringues um, and strawberry and strawberry sauce that we're gonna make. And we're gonna layer it into some very nice clear glass cups and then you just get a spoon and you just dig in and you go for it. Um, so the first step is um, I've already pre-prepped a fair amount of the strawberries because otherwise we wouldn't have time to get through everything. But what I like to do when I do my uh, strawberries, oops, can you grab me those other things that are on the tray there? Oh, nice. Thank you. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. Perfect. So when I do strawberries, a lot of people, when they take the stems off of strawberries, what they do is they just cut the strawberry, right? Um, but you lose a lot of the good fruit when you do that. So when you haul, haul strawberries, what you want to do is just get in there and you want to get the green part out. And I do that by just rotating a sharp, small paring knife and just digging out the actual Part where the stem comes in. So you can see the difference of this kind of a, oops, sorry, <laughs> almost a pyramid shape that has where I've cut out the, the root instead of just cutting off the entire strawberry. So that's the correct way of hulling a strawberry. So I've got two, two bowls going here, as I mentioned. One of them we're going to mash up, and this is where if you're doing a lot of berries that are really, really ripe, you want to separate the super ripe, ripe ones, and those are going to be the ones that are going to go into the mash bowl. And then the other bowl are just the, the remainder of the strawberries. What size do you want to cut them? It's kind of up to you. I like to take the smaller strawberries and cut them into quarters. Um, and the larger one, I usually cut down into uh, eighths. So we're just going to cut. This is kind of an in-between medium one, and I'll go ahead and just cut it down one more time. So that's how you're gonna do that. If you like really big chunks, you can just have the strawberries, but keep in mind 
that you're going to be assembling this in individual cups. So you need to have a size that's going to fit nicely into the cup. And if you end up using a champagne flute to do this, which is very pretty, you're going to want really much smaller bite size pieces. Okay. So we have enough going on here that we can go ahead and start the mashing part. This is going to be the base of the, um, of the, of the sauce. So I'm going to literally get a potato masher and just squeeze these down into a chunky puree. Do you pick out the uh, ripest of the strawberries to do that or do you just? Yeah, that was, that's what I was saying. Uh, you absolutely uh, should use the ripest of the strawberries for this. And um, so definitely when you wash your berries, get them home and rinse them, then pick over them and, and separate what is uh, the ripest ones for the, in order to mash them up and turn them into a practically almost a, a compote. But compotes are, are um, cooked usually. So we're not cooking this. That's why this actually is a great um, last minute, no cook dessert. Okay, this looks pretty good. Now, to this, I'm gonna add some confectioner's sugar. Now you're gonna wanna taste your strawberries and see how sweet they are in order to determine how much sugar you're gonna need. This recipe doesn't need a lot of sugar because we're gonna be working with meringues, which are quite sweet themselves. So I've got, here I've got about a quarter cup of sugar. I'm not gonna use it all. I'm gonna put a couple of tablespoons in. Uh, I like the powdered sugar because it absorbs, it dissolves very quickly into the, um, into the, into the strawberries. And I'm gonna use a little bit of orange zest and some orange juice, about a tablespoon of juice and a teaspoon of zest. You can also do this with lime if you, if you wanna get that really, really tangy lime flavoring going, but um, I love orange and strawberry and you don't need much of this. It's, we're just gonna grate the equivalent of about a teaspoon. It's gonna come through on the other side here. Um, you don't wanna overdo it because you don't wanna create a, an orange bitterness. You just want to infuse some orange flavor. So I think that looks good. And tap that in there. On the sugar, you could also use caster sugar, couldn't you? Yes, you could. Caster sugar, the super fine sugar, is fine. You could definitely use that. Okay, and then I'm just going to literally squeeze, get about a tablespoon of juice into there. That looks really good. Just, it's a great just combination. A combination, yeah. Yeah. And you know, we're talking about springtime. You could certainly put some fresh mint into this. That, that would be, be wonderful. Yeah. Yep. That would yeah. be very, very nice. Especially if you end up using lime. That would the lime yeah, and mint yeah. would do really well. It would. It would. Okay. So this is nicely mixed. Sometimes you might need to get in there and just, you know, with a fork if you see some larger bits, just, and now we're going to combine the other fruit, the other strawberries that are all cut. Oh, here you go. Strawberries on strawberry. Strawberries on strawberry. Thank you. Okay. So at this point, this is a, this part you could make ahead and just let that macerate in the refrigerator for a bit. So you have a nice kind of combination of the, the, the berries and as these, as these um, macerate, as they, as they marinate together, they will juice out a little bit more. But you don't need to put any more. Oh, you are. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit more yeah, just because okay. there's a fair amount of strawberries yeah, no, in here. No, I, I hear you. That's, uh, that makes sense. I was going to say that that seemed like that would be a good idea. Yep. And you just did it. <laughs> okay. So that gets set to the side. Um, and now we're going to prepare, um, we're going to prepare the meringues and we're going to take these lovely, these very pretty vanilla meringues and we're going to smash them to pieces. <laughs> <laughs> this is why they call it the mess. They call it the mess. So the name, this eaten mess actually goes, dates back 
uh, a long time ago. Um, it is a it's a dessert that originated in from Eton uh, College, which is a very prestigious all boys boarding high school and uh, higher education school in England. And it, it's one of the schools that has produced kings and statesmen and prime ministers. And they have an annual rugby game where everybody, who, when they're assembled, they eat this strawberry meringue thing, kind of like going to Wimbledon and eating strawberries. They eat the eaten mess. And I assume it's named after the mess that a rugby field that is caused at the end of the rugby game. But you know, it's a great way to practice making your meringues. Homemade meringues, because if they mess up, if they turn out to be not so beautiful. Absolutely. You do this You just it. turn them so. into this. Now, I'm not prolific enough as a baker to take on making meringues. So I just buy them. So we've got a variety of sizes here in the uh in the mess and we'll just stick them there for now oh, and so doesn't that look so yummy it sure does. and now the fun part is the whipped cream so the whipped cream you want to use heavy cream and um you want the cream to be a very very cold so don't take it out of the refrigerator until you're really ready to use it and it's at this point that I'm going to uh, switch on my machine. And for those of you who uh, don't want to hear the noise, you may want to mute your um, mute yourselves for a couple of minutes. This isn't going to take long because it's very cold, but I do want you to observe observe what happens from the liquid. Now this pan, this bowl, excuse me has also been in the freezer. So it's an icy cold bowl uh, with very cold whipping cream. And there's a chunk that's trying to come out of here. And that's the, all this, this is all fat that's gonna, you know, help the uh, viscosity of the, of the um, cream turn into nicely whipped cream. So we're gonna try to do, we're gonna do whipped cream. Um, yeah, is it yeah. liquidy enough? I think so. Okay, there that's good. We go. So we're gonna get it whipped till it's in stiff peaks, but we don't, we're gonna stop before it becomes butter. So here we go. Danielle, is there any way you can put that a little bit closer under the, the camera? It just looks like a, a just like a white plane right now. We don't really necessarily see any detail. Okay, you'll you'll see it. It'll start to oh hold it closer. Can you hold it closer to the camera, Libby? Yes, please. Thank you. I will do that. We are almost there. You can see that it's the viscosity again, it's gotten much thicker. Just another probably 20 seconds, and we'll be all where we need to be.
we have solid whipped cream. Um, this is why you want to use heavy cream and get it into whipped state as opposed to going out and getting one of those cans of <laughs> whipped cream, um, which are great on top of pies, but it doesn't serve the same purpose um, as this. Okay, and now we've got our meringues. Wow. I'm going to save some for garnish at the top, but it's great to try to get you can see in the bottom here, we've got some of these really, these little pieces that have gotten very powdery. And I'm gonna go ahead and dump those in there because that's gonna add sweetness to the whipped cream. We did not add any uh, confectioner, just any added sugar into this. Can you grab me a spatula? Um, although you could, you know, you could if you wanted to, but there's really no need because the meringue is plenty sweet. Okay, now you're gonna gently fold. You can hear the crunch, crunch of the. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you want, when you bite into this, you know, you want the crunch of the meringue and. Um, oh, hold it up to the, hold it up to the. You want the crunch of the meringue and, uh, you know, the, the fluffiness of the cream. Looks pretty darn good. Yeah. Okay. And then we're going to. Do some assembly. Now, I do have one other thing to show you all here, which is completely optional. But Adrian and I have often incorporated interesting um, flavorings into a lot of the dishes we love to do. And one of the things that we've worked with in the past is pomegranate syrup, pomegranate molasses. Now, this is uh, this is an idea that I actually borrowed off of um, uh, a chef, <laughs> but. Um, it's it's entirely optional, but I've got a simple syrup here made of uh, three tablespoons of sugar and three tablespoons of hot water. I actually use cane sugar, so uh, evaporated cane sugar, so the color is a little bit darker than than you would normally get with a an, a regular granulated sugar. And with that, I'm going to switch these out for a second. This is again, as I said, this is going to be a little syrup that I'm going to drizzle on the layering. You don't have to make this, but if if you happen to have this pomegranate syrup on hand, maybe you're one of the Cook Sisters regulars and you went out and bought it one year after we were using it in one of our fabulous recipes. This is a good way of using up some of this pomegranate syrup or pomegranate molasses. And so I'm gonna mix that in there and it's gonna give just this really sweet, tangy kind of combination. And with it, I'm going to put a tiny uh, bit of sumac. Now, sumac is an, a spice. Um, it comes from a berry, and it's got a very, very lemony flavor to it. It's deep red color. So I'm going to put about a quarter teaspoon in there, and that's going to give it an additional very lemon flavoring to it. It's a very intense spice. It is. So this is really going to dress up this eaten mess to a very adult palate. Um, and I say that because this is a great dessert that kids are going to love. They probably might have a little bit of a difficulty adjusting to the sour, sweet pomegranate flavor, unless their uh, taste buds are more developed. So this is totally optional. But we're going to go ahead and drizzle a little bit on there just um, to make it a really grown up, very Mother's Mother's Day E kind of dessert. Okay, how about bourbon? Bourbon? <laughs> I'm just suggesting it might be kind of nice to get some things like that. Maybe, I guess you could, maybe. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna do a little drizzle at the bottom of each of these glasses of our syrup. Not much, just a little. And then I'm gonna start by layering with the strawberry. Pop some strawberry in there. Whoop. Do that with both of these. And then we go to the wonderful whipped cream. Let me wipe these around. I'm gonna try to get everything in the in at once. Okay. And then a dollop of the cream. It doesn't have to be perfectly, you know, uh, horizontal. Don't go, don't go stressing yourself about making an, 
absolutely. No, as a matter of fact, the messier it looks, the better it is. I know, that's so true. <laughs> it, it is, you'll see at the end, it just like, it looks like this fabulous mess. And then back to the strawberries. And this makes a fair amount. You, you get a good, at least, these are huge glasses, by the way, that I'm using. You, you can do smaller portions. Oh, course. absolutely, because it's very rich. Yeah. And then I'll do another little drizzle of our pomegranate. Little syrup. This is our lunch, Danielle, isn't it? I guess so. Yeah, I think so. I'm sorry you all aren't going to be able to join us, but we'll <laughs> let you know how it turns out. Okay. And then, so you just keep going like that. And obviously I have more ingredients uh, than I have glasses right now or time to complete them. So put two, one for Adrian, one for me, one more layer. And then when you, when we get to the top, we're going to just finish it off with a final layer of whipped cream. Oh, we're going to be so full after this. <laughs> it's going to be a nap time for the afternoon, I think. Look at that. Isn't okay. that gorgeous? Now, um, one Oops. little last drizzle of the pretty, tasty, yummy pomegranate. Mm -hmm. And I have a really cool thing here. I have these gorgeous rosebuds dried rosebuds because rose petals are entirely edible yeah okay so in honor of mother's day i went ahead and pulled some of the buds apart and you see these very lovely little mini roses yeah, little roses. Mini roses so we're gonna put some lip sprinkle some little they almost look like nuts don't they when you they do up? and and i and i've often uh when i've had them in restaurants not that recently because i haven't been out in like the rest of us in like two and a half years but um you know i've often been uh taken aback when i when i when you hold it up i mean the smell the scent of them is yes. just absolutely yeah, very 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 exquisite delicious. and then i also went ahead and i did some zesting of some oranges some little orange longer zests so i'm going to just drizzle that set that in there and that sort of completes so really the time the time element on this is really more on the assembly than it is on the preparation yeah and you know you can assemble these if you're doing these as a dessert you, you want to eat them right away look at the colors on there look there's even a heart looks like a oh heart. that's right that's so cool yeah it's like a little heart <laughs> um so yeah i mean you can you can certainly keep them in the fridge for an hour or so before you eat them um but there's our uh, very very pretty mother's day okay and so if i will just switch us back so we can field some questions here and you can get your lovely salad in place where do you want it here it's probably as good a place as any right mm -hmm. Yeah, let's move these out. Let's move these up. Go ahead and get your salad. There we go. Look at those emojis. <laughs> yep. So we did have a question. This person was asking if you're using rose petals, if you could put a teaspoon of rose water in the syrup as well. Oh, that would be that. wonderful. Absolutely. You could very much do that. Yes, you definitely, definitely could. And you included that syrup recipe with the recipe today, correct? So if people download it, they can find it. Yep, it's at the it's at, at the bottom of the page. I said zing, you know, liven things up, zing things up with this. And you might find other uses for this syrup once you've tasted it. You know, as we move more into the summer months and we're doing more salads with fruits, um, you could drizzle that. In fact, if you're grilling any fruits, that would be incredible on top of grilled. Um, pineapple or mangoes you could just you know put a little drizzle on that so think about you know really playing around with it a bit yes um so if you were allergic to eggs could you forego the meringues or is there something else that you could use instead of meringues yeah so if you if you are allergic to eggs you don't have to put them in then it's no longer an eaten mess then it's called a strawberry fool and i kid you not 
there are it, the fool is a, is is a dessert in and of itself with the, just the whipped cream. That said, there are a number of um, good options, other options that are egg free uh, cookies that you could either make yourself or um, or buy. Fantastic! And you had mentioned that you want to eat this pretty much right away. Is that because you want the meringues to stay a little bit crunchy? Yes. Yes. That's not to say that it's a, it's not okay a few hours from now. I have I have had it the next morning and you it, it's delicious, but the meringue is definitely soft, has become soft. And can you use other fruits and berries or things in this or? Yeah. Blueberries would be wonderful or a mixture of blueberries and strawberries. You can definitely do a combination. And as you get into summer, you could do this with peaches too, which would be really, really yes, delicious. That would be great. Mm -hmm. The same thing, mashing them up and then mixing them in. Yeah, yeah. cut some up real small, get the ones that are really uh, uh, overly ripe. You want to peel them. Um, you will want to peel them, but um, then you can mash up the, the, the overripe ones. Yep. Fantastic. Well, I just want to thank you both so, so much for your time today and your energy and your efforts. This has been a delightful way to spend the last hour on a slightly drizzly day, but uh, it's lovely to bring a little spring into, into things. So thank you very much. Thanks to everyone who joined us. And this, this concludes our program today. Thank, thank you. you, Ruby. Thank you all for coming out.